Hi, and welcome back to Psychology with me, Mr. Snyder. And today we're going to hop into a new unit about personality. And so we're going to talk about trait theory and the trait approach today. Your learning targets are to discuss the most influential trait theorists and their theories about, um, and we'll discuss theories of Hippocrates, Allport, and Eisnick. We'll analyze the five-factor model, which is the most popular trait theory model, and we'll describe what psychologists really feel about the trait approach. So let's go ahead and get started. A personality, if I were to say that in everyday conversation, you may say it was someone's most striking characteristics, and you may even tell me that a negative thing about something is, oh, you may play it off as, oh, that's just part of their personality. But the psychological definition of personality is the, the patterns of feelings, motives, and behavior that set one person apart from the other. So that is um, a person's personality. We're looking at their feelings, their behaviors, and their motives. A trait in trait theory is an aspect of personality that is considered to be relatively stable and it can be used to account for behavior in different situations so that is a trait that's what we're dealing with here happy sad depressed um, angry frustrated short tall uh, honest upstanding all can be traits there's tens of thousands of traits in the English language um, one of the first people to experiment with trait theory was Hippocrates or I like to call him Hippocrates. Hippocrates was a Greek physician who believed that the body contains different types of fluids called humors. And the combination of these four bodily fluids produced personality traits. So the four fluids were yellow bile, blood, phlegm, and black bile. And different combinations of those um, things in your body. Uh, and sometimes they would let different... Um, Thing, different fluids out of your body in order to change your personality and that um, obviously is not true but that is one of the earliest theories of traits. Allport and Eisnick they are the more modern trait theorists. In the 1930s Allport catalogs 18,000 human traits in the 1930s. He describes physical traits, behavioral traits, and moral traits. So physical traits like short, tall, brunette, blonde, redhead, or, uh, not redhead, but um, things like that. Behavioral traits such as like emotional, shy, angry, frustrated, and moral traits like honest, upstanding, etc. So different, three different styles of traits, all poor catalog. And Allport asserted then through his research that a person's behavior is a product of his or her individual combination of traits that are fixed in the nervous system and cannot be changed. Eisnick then, Hans Eisnick, studied two personality dimensions. So think of two lines, one going this way, one going this way. Eisnick um, studied the differences between introverts and extroverts. And he said introverts tend to be a, imaginative and look inward for their ideas and energy, while extroverts tend to be active and gain energy from the um, interaction with other people. And he also studied the stable versus unstable continuum. Stable people are reliable and un, uh, unstable people are unpredictable or unreliable. And his personality types are similar to those of Hippocrates. So Hippocrates, even though he thought it was uh, fluids, was on to something. Look at Eisnick's personality dimensions and see if you fall into any of these uh, different, different uh, categories. So we have the emotionally unstable and introverted. These would be traits that describe you. The emotionally stable and introverted this green section, these would be traits that describe you. Emotionally stable and extroverted, the orange section describes you. And emotionally unstable and extroverted, these describe you. So the five-factor model. Um, psychologists have a hard time agreeing on what traits um, make up human 
um, humanity, but they can agree on these five at least. And the five basic personality factors are e extroversion, emotional stability, conscientiousness, agreeableness, and openness to experience. And studies on the five-factor model have found that there's correlations between certain behaviors and particular traits. For example, people who receive many traffic tickets and get into um, collisions score lower on the agreeableness scale. And people, it may even describe politics, people who are conservative um, or come from an authoritarian country tend to be not high on the open to experience uh, scale. They don't score highly on that. The five-factor model also helps psychologists to describe basic d anxiety disorders, and that's what it's used for today. Um, like I said before, psychologists have a hard time describing um, which are the most basic personality traits, but they can agree that these five are important. And here they are again, along with some traits, extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, emotional stability, instability, and openness to experience. So how do psychologists evaluate the trait approach? We'll do this and we'll evaluate all the approaches we're going to talk about. And it's very narrow-minded. It has a singular focus, and that's describing traits. And we have not been able to link personality traits to any sort of biological factors. And today, it only focuses on describing traits and not describing or explaining where they come from. This approach also suggests that there are links between personalities, abilities, and interests. So it is very useful and practical to use in uh, career inventory tests, interest inventory tests, um, just to match people with certain interests up to certain jobs and certain educational skills. So it does have a use there. And lastly, it does not provide an explanation of how personality develops. It's just kind of a snapshot of a person and describing their traits. So because of this, psychologists question its clinical application. So let's review our learning targets. We did discuss the three most influential trait theorists and their theories, and we came up with our definition of personality and traits. We analyzed the, fav the five factor model, and we talked about what psychologists feel are the five main personality factors, so know those. And we described how psychologists view and evaluate the trait approach. So that's all for section one. Hopefully you found this interesting. Fill out those learning targets, and I'll see you back in class. Have a good night.